Okay, so this video we're going to be adding some functionality to the tutorial one graph that we made. If you don't remember what we did with this one, all we did was take a radio uh, signal station and be able to listen to it and visualize it. Now, it was very basic, we couldn't really change much about it, and with that we had to do a lot to just like actually change our frequency if we wanted to change our radio station, or we wanted to make the volume louder, we couldn't really do any of that. So that's what we're going to do in this video, is add some of that functionality to it. So the first thing we need to do is create some variables. Now you can find the variables like anything else in these blocks, but I think what's easier is taking that default sample rate var var variable, copying it, and pasting it. And we need, we need two of these, so I'm going to paste another one in. Uh, these are going to help us with changing the radio station and also allowing us to more easily update our sample rate. So the first one I want to do is change our channel width. Now what our channel width is, is a way of not having to update our decimation values when we uh, change our sample rate and if we wanted to, which I do want to. So we're going to call it channel underscore width and we're going to set the default value to 200,000 or 200E3. Now, what this will do is we'll, we can put this in any of these technically, but I'm going to put it in the low pass filter. And we're going to change the decimation to the integer, which is int in the parentheses. This has to be an integer because this is a green block. Um, green is integer, then the orange blocks are float, blue blocks are complex. So they, they apply to the same things that are on the edges of these, just within a certain, um, certain block, you may have more than one type. So we need to take the integer of this because this may be not an integer at some point. So this will make it an integer. Um, we're gonna change it to the integer of the sample rate divided by the channel width. I will explain how that works. So, as I stated in the last video, we wanted a 48,000 sample rate by the end of this, because that's what audio um, on the radio is transmitted at, is at 48,000 kilohertz. And I said, if you wanted to change the sample rate, you would have to uh, either cut the decimation in half or double the interpolation on any of these. So, what we just did there is made it so that we do not have to do that. If we wanted to drop our sample rate, say, down to 1 million, we'll automatically update from 20, which you can see up there, to 5. Because what it is doing is it is taking that sample rate and dividing it by 200,000. So, so now this is 1 million, we're only decimating by 5, it's still 200,000. No matter what we change our sample rate to, it's always going to end up being 200,000 up there. Because we're dividing by 200,000, or we're dividing our sample rate by 200,000, which in turn changes the decimation to what it would need to be to get 200,000. So that adds the functionality of only having to change our sample rate now. The other variable we want to change to something called center underscore freak. And we're going to set our center frequency to 98.9 E6. Now, coincidentally, that is the center station for... Our center frequency is what we just set our channel zero frequency, uh, or our, our channel zero frequency to. And in a little bit, we will use this variable to help us be able to change radio stations on the fly while using the program and not having to stop the program, change it to what we want, and then look at it again. So how you do that is you have to create some variables that you can change within the GUI itself. There are, there are a bunch of different kinds that you can use, but the ones we want to use are QT GUI ranges, which are right here. These are, these are GUI widgets. There's a bunch can use checkboxes, 
um, a list of, that you can choose from, labels, button pushing, etc. A range is just a slider. So your default value is your center value and what it's going to be, what's, what it's going to start at. So in terms of changing our radio, which is what we're going to do with this, we're going to call this one the channel frequency. Our default value is going to be uh, 98.986 because that is our starting channel. Our The lowest that FM radio can go is 87.9. And the highest it can go is 107.96. Now our step is how much distance we want to put in between each little tick on a slider. And because they are, because FM radio stations are 200,000 um, megahertz wide, you can just set it to 203. And then each one will go to a different radio station. So when you tune in the car, it goes from 87.9 to 88.1 to 88.3. This will do the same thing with steps of 200,000 each time. We also want another GUI range because we're going to add volume control to our flow graph. So this one's going to be a little different. We're just going to call it audio underscore, underscore gain. Our default value will be 1 because we'll be multiplying it. We'll set our our stop to 10, our, our start to 0, and our step can be 0 0.1. So now we have all the variables over here that we need, but now we need to implement them into the flow, flow graph itself. So to change the channel frequency, we need a couple blocks. The first one we need is a signal source block. Now on its own, this will just generate a, a signal at whatever frequency you want it to. But, so right now, if you just plug this into a QTGUI sync, it would just be showing a signal at 1000 Hertz. And it would just be a spike, it wouldn't be changing or anything. So what we can use this for is we can help help us um, change what radio station we are by having our variables be stored in here and then multiplying that with the signals that we're getting from the Osmo com source because we still need to be picking up the signals from the HackRF itself. So to do that, you're going to take your frequency and change it to the center frequency, which we set, subtracted by the channel frequency, which is our variable that we would be changing. So now we have a signal source. Now we need a multiply block. So we're going to look for multiply. Mm. And once it comes in, you'll see that it has two blue inputs. Now to get rid of any of these lines, you can just click it and kind of drag away from it. Eventually it will get rid of that. There you go. We can put this here, connect these together, um, we can connect our signal source to that. This input on the left is grayed out, but you can use that to alter the frequency within it and basically connect it to something that would change the frequency. We don't need to do that because we have a slider that does that. So this input isn't necessary, which is why it is grayed out, but you can use it if you want to. And we gotta connect our Osmocom source to it. So just to demonstrate what this looks like, we opened up our flow graph and ran it. we'll be able to change our radio station. We can kind of hear some... I know another radio station is 
So you can change the radio station on the fly with this, using this. Now our audio game is down here, but it's, we haven't set it up yet, so that won't quite work. Uh, to do that, all we need to do is at the very end, change the volume of it. And what we can do for that is get rid of this right before the audio sync. And we can move our audio sync down here so we have some more room. And what we want is a multiply constant block. Now what this does is instead of multiplying two different values, it will multiply a value that is within this block itself, this constant that is currently set to zero. Now, right now these are blue inputs and outputs, and we have an orange input and output here. So to change that, there are a couple ways you can do that. You can come in here and you can change the ID type to float, which is what we want because that's orange. But the quicker way to do that is to highlight it and then click the down arrow on the computer and it will change the type so you can go through all the different types you can go through your orange for float you can go to green for integer and you can go to i believe to yellow for short but we want orange so we're going to go back up to orange and we're going to connect our wbfm receive to our multiply constant now because we've already done our quadrature array with our WBFM receive block and the 48,000 is here, this won't actually affect the sample rate, but just will be affecting how strong the signal is coming in. So we don't have to worry about it messing up our sample rate. So what we would do is just, we would just set this constant to audio underscore gain. And now, when we did that, we'll be able to control the volume in real time. So if we run our flow graph, we'll be on a default station. To make it louder, or we can even get rid of it entirely. So now we have a working audio gain and a working channel frequency as you would in your car. So that's a bunch of different functionality you can add to your flow graph to help you edit things while you're in it. This is more useful in situations where you may not know exactly where your signal is when you're starting. So you can set up things like ranges to help you search for it so you don't have to come back into your flow graph every time you think you found something and edit it. So this is how you add functionality to your flow graph and in the next video we'll be demonstrating how to transmit signals to instead of just receiving them from a radio station.